I'm sure by now you've become a little bit familiar with the fictitious company Aquo, and it's a water company or an energy drink company. What we're going to do is we are going to add a 3D model. We're going to add our own little drink squad here. We're going to do a Vida Beetle, and we're going to put some textures and stuff on it and make it fit inside this scene. What we have right now is a photograph of the uh, building here, and we've got a little bit of a logo added here, some depth of field effect, and then we've got a wet-looking ground, so it looks like it's just been raining. And also it'll enable us to put some realistic-looking reflections down there, because typically cement won't reflect unless it's wet. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get our Vida Beetle. So now we're going to use a 3D model because if we used a photograph, we wouldn't have the flexibility to be able to rotate it and to do some different things with it that you'll see uh, coming up pretty soon. So the first thing we need to do is to create our 3D model. Now we could go into Strata uh, Design. If you'll notice here, we've got the plugins here. We've got Filter. We've got Strata Design. We could hit Model in New, and we could actually create the 3D model inside Strata. But for those of you who are not artistically enough inclined to be able to create a 3D model, or maybe you just don't want to spend the time doing that, we can quickly grab one. Because Photoshop uh, now has this new filter which you can actually download from Adobe Labs, and it's under the Automate, and it's called Search Google for 3D Model. And Adobe's developed this plugin, we just click on it, and it launches Google 3D Warehouse, which is an open source, free source for 3D models. So now we can look for Beetle, click search, and now we get a bunch of different Beetles there. Actually, that's kind of a nice one, but we're not going to use that one. Let's scroll down, and we'll go to the second page. And this is our one we're going to use here. We're going to use our Volkswagen Beetle. And all you would need to do now is just click Download Model, and it'll download the model and put it into a PSD. But to save you having to wait while I'm downloading, I've previously done that. And we can just click here. Here it is. I just downloaded it. And now all I need to do is just drag this over because notice now it's on a 3D layer. But before we drag it over, there's something I want to make you aware of. If your image size here, the actual dimensions of your document, are larger than they are inside Strata here, well, actually inside Photoshop, we're going to be going into Strata pretty soon, it's not going to display properly when we look at our image in the background. So what we need to do is make sure that the file sizes match. So we'll look at image, image size. And notice that we have 700 by 460. So we can go back into our beetle image, and we're going to resize this. We're going to choose image, image size, and we're going to make a document width 700. Make sure you turn off constrain proportions and turn on resample image by 460 and click OK and don't worry about resizing this it doesn't actually affect the model because we're not resizing the 3d model itself because notice here it's inside a 3d layer so what it's actually doing is just creating a reference to the 3d model so what we're doing is making a canvas sizes match now we're going to take our model and we're just going to drag and drop it right there inside our Photoshop document now let me just hit F a couple of times to go to a different screen mode, make it just a little easier for you to see what's going on. And now here's our vehicle, and it's not looking too bad. It's pretty roughly positioned, but I'd like to maybe enlarge it a little bit, and the back looks like it's kind of flying off the ground, so we need to level it out a little bit. So what we need to do is just look in the layers palette. You'll notice there's a little 3D-looking cube there, and that means this is a 3D layer. Now, if this isn't working for you, you need to have Photoshop CS3 extended in order to support these 3D features. So we're going to double-click right on the thumbnail, and notice at the top here we have these different settings become available. So what we're going to do is we're now just going to grab this button here, and then we're going to drag as we drag up. Notice it gets smaller. As we drag down, it gets larger. So we're going to resize it, make it a little bigger. And we can grab that one. We can slide it over. That's our positioning tool there. And then we're going to grab our other tool here. This one here enables us to rotate this. And notice what happens. I can actually completely rotate this in 3D space. Look at that. You can do a lot of crazy stuff with that. But let's not get too crazy. Let's just make this look nice and level. Maybe bring it around a little bit. And we'll just position this where it's looking 
like it's not falling over. Let me just tilt it over just a little bit more. And there we go. We've got our model there sitting on the ground. And obviously, once we add some shadows and stuff like that, it'll make it look a lot more realistic. So now we're going to apply the transformation just by clicking the little check mark here. And now we want to add some different logos and different graphics to it. So what we can do now is we can actually change these textures by going in under filters and in choosing strata design and we're going to be using the model edit. Now we'll just wait and strata design 3D is going to launch. Notice here it's a plugin that works with Photoshop. And now we come in here we've got a full featured 3D modeling application. As you can see here, we could actually create our own models from scratch. There's a lot of different things we could do. Right now, we're looking at a camera, and this camera is actually a Photoshop camera. So this is the Photoshop angle. If we wanted, we could click here, and we can get a three-up view. We could drag around these different panes and look at the views in different kind of ways. We can enlarge certain views. We can open new cameras, and we can split these views again. We can do all kinds of different things. But let's just go back to our camera here. Let's find that because the camera is what we're working from. Now, here's our model. All we need to do is just click on it, make sure that we've got our selection tool. And notice that this is actually grouped. There's a lot of different little objects here that are grouped together. Well, we can quickly ungroup them by clicking up here and we choose the ungroup. And notice now we see all the different parts of this. We could grab the different parts, we could edit them, we could transform them. We could do a lot of different things, but we're not going to get into the absolute full power of this application in this tutorial. What we're going to do is we're just going to add some textures. So we're going to go into here, and we've got some textures that were created earlier, Aqua Textures. And I'm going to grab this logo here, and I'm going to drop it right on the door. And notice that the logo gets added, and there's our little Drink Squad logo. Now we're going to grab the other texture here, and we're just going to drag this on the side panel. Just give a little bit of color. And now we can bring this back into Photoshop. And all we need to do is just go up here, and you'll see these little plugins here. We can just click this first button, and then we get this option to return to Photoshop. And yes, we want to send the model. And we can send and close. We don't need the application anymore right now. So now this is coming back into Photoshop, and it's still a 3D model. And what it's going to do now is it's just going to drop our textures on there. But there's something else you'll notice when it comes in. In a second there, you're going to see that the model is actually going to look a lot better. just takes a little second for it to think. Notice now we've got all kinds of reflections, and we've got a much better looking model here. And that's because it's all the lighting and everything has been brought in now from Strata. I'm looking at this model, and I feel like the back is still a little bit too high. So we're just going to double click, and here we are back in there again. And look at this, we can still transform, we can rotate this thing around as much as we want. And those textures and everything are going to move right with it. So let's bring that around a little bit so we can get a better angle on this. Let me bring it up a little bit. I think that looks better. It's sitting a lot better now. And so you can see how all that works. We can change the lighting here. We can go into the Photoshop's lighting, and we can go down, and we can just choose just a single light from eye for now, and that gets rid of some of those reflections and simplifies it a little bit, and we're just going to apply that transformation. So now we can see it's starting to come together, but there's some things that are missing. We want to put a reflection down here. We'd like to put a shadow there. Now, I could make a reflection in Photoshop. I could duplicate that layer and flip it over. I'm sure you've all seen a technique. But it's actually better to do this in 3D, and you're going to see why. What we're going to do is we're actually going to not just change the reflections and the shadows, but we're also going to set up the lighting. Because if you look at this, the lighting is not correct. If you look at the photo itself, it seems like the lighting is coming from behind. As you can see, the shadows down here. You can see that lighting is coming up. And see the shadow there? It's coming from there. But right now, the lighting on this model here is coming from in front, which is not actually accurate.